Hello YouTube, welcome back to the shack. I'm just currently putting a radio back in the box on camera because everyone seems to do it off camera. Everyone opens a video up and says, I've already opened it, and had a look at it, and then I do a review. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to the shack. We're going to do a video today on uh, the the NAS N M8 MASS Mike Alpha Alpha Sierra. The Mass KCB H-1000. If anyone knows what the letters mean, um, please put them in the comments below. So, anyway, I bought the Mass 100 KHCB thingy. The Thunderpole is on the screen in front of me. Um, which was the first option because everyone was buying them. Ev everyone's buying these things and doing reviews on them. Well, done them. I'm, I'm late. I'm late with this. Everyone's been doing this for months when they came out ages ago. Um, but they were sold out. Sold out everywhere. They've done so well. People were doing reviews on YouTube. Um, that everywhere sold out. £109. The microphone's £15. The car kit, which this comes with, was another £15 and £10 for the case. I don't want a case. So £150, quid, all that's going to cost you. Uh, and then there's the pin, pin, uh, pin uh, what is it? The pinny, pin, pin, PNI. P and I do quite a lot of radios, and they do a mixture of CB radios. They do one here that looks like the old Midland Allen. Uh, there's the Midland Allen. So you can buy one with a car kit. So that's the CB. This is an AM transceiver. They do one where the battery comes off, and then you can slide on your 12-volt uh, car kit, as opposed to this one and the Thunderpole, which just clip in and screw on. Um, Right, so I'm referring to this quite a lot because this is about the size of an old, that's still quite small, old CB handheld. And then there's the Joe Pix, Joe Pix, um, exactly the same as this, the Thunderpole, Joe Pix, they're all the same radio, slightly different before anyone complains. The layout of the screen's different. Um, this just has a bar for a signal meter. The Thunderpole, I believe, has numbers which people quite like. So anyway, if you do buy one of these, we'll rip it open carefully because we like to keep boxes. I'll show you what you get in the box. Oh, the first time unboxing this. Um, I was quite impressed with the radio and I'm going to take off the belt clip because that's in the box separate because you get options. You can either put on this belt clip, which slides in and out, doesn't screw in like other radios. Um, and while that's off, we'll unscrew this bad boy bad boy screw bad boy screw we'll put on the spectacles because there's a battery in there and we need safety first safety first folks so this is a pain in the neck right there we go there's your battery you can just unplug it it's a 1800 milliamp power 7.4 volts if you want to know and when you screw the battery cover back on you can pop this screw out and instead of putting that screw back in, they give you an attachment to go onto uh, to like clip it in something other than a belt. But I like what's well, more more useful for me is the belt clip, which just goes on there. Now I've heard some really good reports on this BNC connecting. 27 megahertz antenna a lot of people say it's more tuned for 26 megahertz when they put it on a an antenna analyzer um but people have tried the big whips different antennas and this thing seems to work brilliantly so we're not going to do a review on that other people have done it uh we're going to go into the box and show you more that it comes with again usb lead oh, don't think that's the one it came with i can't remember i bought another set of radios at the same time same day and one of them came with a really long lead. I think it might have been this. And one of them came with a not so long lead. I think that was for the, hat, the, the PMRs. It also came with a 12 volt adapter, uh, two USB ports, which is brilliant because obviously I've got the USB lead for my EDC radio. That's my Yaesu FT 2D. I carry that everywhere every day. And I can charge that with USB. And if I want to take this out, I can charge it with uh, this we'll come on to charging in a minute because it doesn't charge from 12 volt all right also in the box you get one of these 
radios, it's all in English. It's bought from England and used in England, but they're still sending out these two prong fucking things. Just the USB. And I wouldn't want to use that. They all say they take between 100 volts to 1,000 volts or whatever it is. So that'll go back in the box. There's the attachment. When you screw on your battery cover, you've got the option to put one of these round things here. And all that does on the back of the radio, this sticky thing sticks to your dashboard. We know nothing sticks to dashboards. And then you can just drop the radio in there. And there's like a ball joint to secure it. Um, where the other ones I've got, there's a button to release it. So I don't think I'll be using this. Oh, it could be handy. Put it on the car dash. And then I've got my other ones with belt clips that you put on and they lock in. You know, the place I've got in their jackets. I've got, I've got some of them somewhere in the shed. So you've got different ways of mounting it and carrying it. Uh, and then, then, the, the, Adapter lead car kit lead thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not that long, but to go from the cigarette lighter on most dash cards, cards, most dashboard cars, that will probably reach to the radio. And then a connection there for PL259 to go into, so you can run an external antenna on the vehicle. Now, I don't know that if you connect this to there. And then s screw it in. Now, you can only get like a quarter of a turn on it, so you might be better off using a SCUS driver. There's an option there for flat-headed SCUS driver. So if it does have a SCUS driver, use that. Um, so yeah, when that's in there, I found out it didn't actually charge the radio. You can only charge from USB. USB-C type on a handheld radio. I was liking that. That's one of the selling points. Yeah, the Thunderpole does that. and Some other ones have a, a round of DC input to charge. But I like that option. So now, obviously, if that's installed in the car, I've got the dangly thing going out the back for the antenna, this dangly thing going out to the dashboard to power it. Um, that's now on 4 watts. And I don't... I don't know if it isolates that or does that still work. So either way, take that off. And then it's just like a big speaker mic, a big speaker mic with, with buttons. Um, when you're on battery, I believe, I can't test it, the test is out in the shed. I believe you get three watts on battery and four watts when you're on 12 volts. Um, but yeah, I'm quite impressed with it, really. So again, it's going to just sit in the Land Rover. I'm not actually planning on um participating in the hobby of cb this is just a form of communication while i'm out and about and an extra kit to the arsenal as i said i have got several i've got three or four mini midlands a little tri stuff or stuff thing I've got one of them I've got a big home base i've got that i've probably got five or six maybe eight or nine cbs still in the shed so we'll do a size comparison right we're gonna go back to this am airband transceiver radio as I said before, because this is roughly the old school CBs when I was a teenager were huge and they took 10 or 12 AA batteries all down the back and then you slid the cover on and the thing way at a time was massive, didn't last long. And they were roughly this big, if not bigger and, and deeper. And then the new one, the new CB radio, again, that's a 27 megahertz antenna. That one's for airband. That's, that's a ICOM, IC, no, IC A20. And look at the, the difference in that. With the battery, that's the same size as the radio. We know the battery is there for this thing. That's not a bad size for modern radios. Uh, I'm going to pull out my Watson, my Ocean, my Watson KTGV5AUQBYZ. Yeah. Not a lot in it. Not a lot in it in size difference. And again, my Yaesu FT2D for size comparison. Obviously, a bigger screen, touch screen. But uh, these things are getting smaller. This is a lot smaller than what I had when I was younger. 
So we've got a CB radio handheld backlit. I should have brought you clip closer for this, but we'll try to zoom. Zoom. I never rate it. Zoom is never that good. Um, there we go. A couple of things I don't like about it. The backlight, when you scan, that's scanning now. There's no way this camera is going to pick it up. No, you can see that scanning. Well, you can't. But the light backlight doesn't go out. When you're scanning, the backlight stays on, thus killing thus battery, thus quicker. Um, so we'll stop that from scanning. Now, the second button up, you hold it down. The other thing I don't like, five seconds, the light goes off. There we go. So we can see now. All right, so I'll scan. So when you turn the light off manually, it doesn't come on when it scans, which is fine. That's great. But then whatever you push, the light doesn't come on. You can't put the light until you stop scanning. Hold it down for one, two, three, four, five seconds, and the light comes back on. Other than that, the light's fine. When you're actually using the radio, the light will go off on its own after however long time it is. Um, now, the noise reduction circuitry, NRC, everyone thinks it's brilliant. Um, I've only listened to about three people on this so far. I think I prefer it off. Uh, it's got Vox. You can change the Vox settings. Dual watch, which is always good, so you can monitor two uh, two channels at once. Functions limited. You go to fun function, and you got your Vox control off, um, the, and your tones. So you can have a Roger bleep, which I've turned off, and the keypad tone, which I've turned off. I don't need it to bleep. There we go. Look, the back it's got off all by itself. And when I transmit or push anything, it comes on. So you monitor button again. Uh, you push that. Let's give it a bit of volume. Push it again to go off. Push it. Push it. So why is the backlit a five-second job? <laughs> That's really weird. Um, I'm more of a fan of pushing holes uh, for squelch uh, monitor to open the squelch. I'm more of a fan of that. You hold this down. It doesn't do anything. So you've got your AM, FM, European channels. So you can use this in other countries. You just uh, use the AM, FM band button here. And you can go in and change to CE, UK. I believe if you hold it down, you can select, yeah, Polish, Europe, um, other countries. Now the backlight's off, I can't see the bloody thing. Um, so yeah, that's it. That is, I'll turn the backlight back on now. Another five seconds of my life wasted. I've wasted about a minute of my life <laughs> just turning the backlight on and off. Um, I like it. Uh, I think the volume is a bit slack. Um not protected so you might catch that if you're out portable backpacking and so on not a problem oh the other thing we do like i've seen this mentioned a few times on, on other videos on on these radios along with the thunder pole tx turn it off so we don't catch any buttons accidentally the the cover pulls down from the top but then opens at the side this is el cheapio balfang ebay special it works. The K pin, not the one for the Yesu FT four R. That's smaller together. The Icom has a single pin. So whatever the Baofang radios are, or the Quangshangs, or the Moxon, fits and works. Look at this. Yeah. So signal bar seems great. We'll unplug that because it's going to get in the way. Um, signal bar, I think I mentioned a minute ago, is numbered on the thunder pole. On this one, it's just uh, blocks, bars, which is absolutely fine. You can work out what they are if you wear your glasses and squint. Screen's not a bad size, to be honest. The screen is bigger than... Nah. Not a lot in it. It's rectangle, the walks in the square. So the screen's not much different. It's not as good quality as some other radios or amateur radio equipment. The, the screen quality on this is phenomenal. On this, it's just like a big old calculator screen. But it works. Uh, so far, like I said, I haven't used it. I'm not planning on going out and testing it. I did think about it, doing a range test, but it's, it's pointless. I live in a valley, um, less than a mile in every direction. I've got a hill. Um, so I'd always be trying to make it down if I went past that hill. I wouldn't get it at all. So solely purposed for buying 
handheld CB radio to sit in the car. Just another form of communication or emergency communication or just preparedness communication that you know, I'm preparing when we go out. Like I said, um, there's a spot nearby uh, with the reservoir. I've done a couple of videos there recently. We've got no phone signal at all. So I bought the UK PMR radios for that. So you know, normally as a, a group of us go, we all wander off doing our own things and come back to a central hub. And it, there's no phone signal there at all, ever. And a lot of places, like when we were going North Pennines or North Yorkshire Moors, there's a bit of a tricky off-roading track there, and it's nice to have someone jump out of the vehicle and just say, you know, you're about to rip your sump off or mind your rear diff, left hand down, right hand down. Stop! And it's easier to do that than if I had a fixed radio. I'd have to you know, jump out of the car, find a handheld, turn it on, speak to the guy, get back in. It doesn't, I don't see the point of having two radios for, for my needs, for that purpose. Other people will have a need or purpose for them. But I just didn't think I did need it, really. And then options again. Some people have got CB in their car, some have got hammer stuff. Some people have got PMR, so I just want to cover. So I've got every option covered for me. And if anyone else has got a radio, stuff them. Or, you know, I've got enough spare to go around, really. When we're out and about, that's the important thing. We don't want to lose comms when we're out and about, especially in convoy. Um, it is quite important for comms for that. Again, this one of the range, if anyone drags back or I take the wrong turn in, you know, I'm going to lose contact straight away. But then we've got the option, if we can find it, the car kit. Just throw that on. We'll get an extra watt of power. And uh, I can put my Serio ML145, I think I've got. I've still got one in front around for the old days. Put it out of the car. It's going to keep, keep it in the car with this radio. So I've always got, you know, another option, another frequency. Not often I'm out on the sea, uh, out on the radio, and HF is quiet. But if there's ever a day where it's quiet, I've got another radio to use, you know. Never options. Right, uh, so that's that video on the uh, Mass KCB H1000. That's why I bought it, just for out and about. It's just going to sit in the car. Um, for minor emergencies, because obviously it's an emergency, or well, phone lines have gone dead, or I want to use my phone for video and taking pictures around and about. I don't want to be using it to talk to the car in front. Plus, you know, it's a waste of battery. I need that battery in my phone for the sat nav to get back and to these places. So this will stop me from using, taking up the connection on my phone. Um, might have a call coming through. I have to worry about the battery. I could have to keep taking the phone on and off the dashboard all the time. I can just use this for comms and use my phone for you know the little micro computer stroke camera that it is. <clears throat> we haven't had a slurp of the coffee yet. I think I will get more use out of that than I initially thought. But um, yeah, if you don't see any upcoming videos about it, don't moan. Right, so that's pretty much what they look like. Size, a few specs about it. If you are looking into buying one of these, um, or the Joe Picks or the Thunder Pole. Just get whatever's got the fastest postage, whatever's in the UK or your country, and uh, the cheapest. They're all the same thing. They all do the same thing anyway. Right. I'm going to get on and probably edit this and finish my coffee. And we'll catch you on the next video. So, 10-4, good buddy. Then he said 73. So we'll catch you on the next video.